Hello everyone, once again this is G, and today I'm back with some more Oxygen Not Included, and I want to show you this contraption I've been working on. Specifically, I was really interested in coming up with something that involves molten salt, because you know, molten salt has this interesting property where it has a different specific heat capacity in a gas form versus a liquid form. And so I came up with this as an initial pathfinder, and then I made something a little bit more interesting. I'll show you if you keep watching. But uh, let me pull up a little overlay so you can see what's going on. Okay, here we go. Check this out. So first of all, what we're doing here is we got a regolith melter. We got regolith coming in and igneous coming out. And I know this topic has been probably beaten to death by now, but I thought I just got to do something with molten salt involving this. I mean, certainly something could be done. And here it is. We got... Regolith Igneous Heat Exchanger. This is pretty standard, pretty traditional. Things get a little different if we look over here. We got this heat buffer for these pipes. And we got a, two spikes. We have a cooling spike and a heating spike. And then we got this salt gas chamber over here. And down here we have uh, a little setup to keep the molten salt cool. Otherwise it will boil which would be pretty bad for the pump and everything else. So at any rate, this pump over here uses the uh, simple pump trick to get the uh, five kilos per second of molten salt, and then it gets split into five streams of one kilo per second. And then these streams, they're gonna pass back through the chamber, and then they go through this heat buffer, and this heat buffer at over 1800 degrees and it's going to heat up the salt, but the salt will not explode. Like, it will not burst the pipes, because it's technically above its boiling point, but at one kilo per second, it'll be fine. And when it comes out, it's just going to drip out here, and immediately flash the gas on contact at the bottom. You see, that's what's happening down here. And then, this salt gas is going to transfer heat to this heat spike over here, which is made of diamond as well. And that's going to finally liquefy this regolith and turn it into magma. This uh, magma then cools so quickly by this other cooling spike, which uses uh, regolith to keep it at uh, a lower temperature, and immediately this magma falls out as an igneous rock. So you don't even see magma here. But that's kind of what happens. So the whole idea behind this is to pretty much save on a fairly innocuous amount of energy. You can see here I kind of did some calculations. And basically, because salt gives you more heat, you essentially get 25% free heat out of all of this. You put in about 1,200 kdTUs of heat per second into this whole contraption. And without salt, it would be about 1,500. This whole brick here, this just to simulate some source of high temperature heat. It could be a metal refinery or something else, glass boiler, whatever. It just I just stuck this brick here just to keep it simple. But anyways, a couple other things I want to show you. So the plumbing, once again, we got one pipe of five kilos per second. It splits into five of one kilo per second. And you see it's coming at about, about 1370 degrees. And then it passes through some of the gas to kind of warm up a bit. And then this is where it passes through this heat buffer. Everything here uses tungsten or obsidian or diamond, pretty much. And there's no space materials in this particular setup. But again, it's just a pathfinder. This is not the uh, the final form. I'll show you that in just a minute. But anyways, as it passes through this heat buffer, it gets up to about 1800 degrees, but it does not burst. And then it comes out, flashes the gas over here, and then transfers the heat to this heat spike. This magma over here, this is coming in at about 2200 degrees, but again, it doesn't have to be. It's just, you know, I just simulated with this brick here, some source of heat. And if you look at the conveyor belts, once again, you get regolith, standard heat exchanger here, and then it comes out about 1100, goes to this cooling spike, transfers some heat to it, gains some heat from this uh, salt over here, and then comes down over here and then finally melts the magma and immediately gets comes into contact with this other spike and then cools into igneous rock. Let's see if we can even see the liquid. 
Yeah, you can't even see it. It's so fast. It's kind of flashes for a second. But anyway, this part down here needs to stay liquid. Otherwise, if this boils, it's going to be a problem. So that's why this diamond brick is down here. And as the igneous rock passes through, it helps to keep the temperature down. So it stays at about uh, 1360 or so. And then the igneous rock down here comes out at about... Let's have a look. That's uh, about 1265. So anyways, this was version... Uh, I don't even know how many iterations I tried, but let me show you what I finally came up with at the end of all of this. This is what I finally came up with. And again, we're using molten salt. You can see here, liquid salt up here. There's a tank here of liquid salt. But I figured we need to bring all the exploits to bear here. So the uh, liquid teleport exploit. Once again, we got regolith coming in at 300 degrees. We have our heating loop from some source of heat that's behind the scenes, doesn't matter. But over here now, we've got vertical heat buffer using steam again. It's just delivered here initially using water. And we've got, once again, five inputs at one kilo per second of molten salt. And then as it passes through this chamber, it's going to heat up, but it's not going to flash to gas yet. Oh yeah, ignore the flea. <laughs> That's something else. Yeah, don't worry about that. That's a story for another day. Anyways, over here, we're using glass, but we're not boiling it this time. It's not a glass boiler. This is simply used as a liquid spring. You can see how the mass changes. It doesn't even show the animation of it moving to the side. But in fact, that's what ends up happening is this glass moves to the side, liquid salt comes out and then flashes the gas and immediately goes into the style. You see how it pops in. If I turn on the gas overlay, you'll see. Yeah, there it is. And sometimes you can see liquid salt come out here, but a lot of times you just don't even see the animation. And what ends up happening is this salt gas then transfers the heat to the regolith over here. Again, we have a regular heat exchanger of regolith and igneous rock, standard issue. And then once it comes down to here, it's fairly hot at about 1200 degrees and change. And then it's going up this uh, ladder of sorts made of thermium tiles and diamond temp shift plates. Okay, everything here, I just went all out here with thermium because molten salt has really terrible heat conductivity. It's just outright pathetic at uh, 0 0.44. And so you need thermium to get the heat out of it. So once again, you will see gas here. It builds up. Even with thermium, it's still hard to cool it fast enough. So it builds up. But then after it builds up, transfer of additional gas stops because transfer of the liquid here stops and the way I've done this is I was thinking of how to do this and I thought you know we can put this reservoir and say if the reservoir gets too low that means that this salt must be stuck somewhere and in this case it's like stuck in these tiles and once it's released back up here and gets pumped into the reservoir then it will start releasing the liquid salt back into the loop here. So anyway, that's what I came up with. This pump checks to see if there's enough salt, and if there is, it's going to start pumping and filling the reservoir again. And then over here, it basically melts into magma, and then it drips down. And it doesn't cool fast enough over here, so it cools when it hits this part over here. It, it basically goes inside of this mesh tile, and then after it... Uh, solidifies it has to eject and it ejects it up above the mesh tile and then this regolith over here is what ends up condensing it so regolith heats up a little bit from this magma that drops down and you never end up with any pools of magma or anything like that here the other thing I thought about was uh, that didn't occur to me earlier for some reason is if you shut this off let me show you what happens we're going to speed this along You're going to see that at some point uh, igneous rock is going to run out 
And normally what would happen is Igneous Rock would leave this uh, loop here. But I thought, you know, wouldn't it be nice to, you know, be able to restart this quickly? You might as well have a Igneous Rock loop continue here. Even if it's not being topped up, it'll just continue looping. And the way this goes is you just kind of have a bridge here. So it goes around the loop. And then there's a bridge that catches it, puts it back into the loop. And if the loop is full and it keeps getting topped up, it's going to pop out of this conveyor chute. And that's pretty much it. And then these guys here are getting cooled by Natha. And that in turn is being cooled by a gas loop you can see here, just using hydrogen. Down here, I just simulated cooling with some super coolant, but that would normally go to some kind of a cooling contraption using a steam turbine, etc. And then as far as the other materials are concerned, the insulation, again, it's pretty much all obsidian here. A little bit of ceramic, and I kind of cheesed it with some insulation over here. But again, since we're going all out, might as well. And then as for the automation, is pretty much hardly any at all. There's a little bit of automation involving this reservoir and the shutoff, this pump, and this hydro sensor. And then down here, the shutoff is controlled by this temperature sensor, which is set to 1850. And the feed here is using magma at 3 kilo per second, and it doesn't run all the time. So if it doesn't run, it just kind of loops around here. Yeah, so I finally came up with something using molten salt that actually works, although this was frustrating as all hell to try to get this to work. But uh, I'd be interested in some of the comments you guys have. Let me know what you think. Obviously, this is a little bit over the top and not very practical. You're only saving like a minute amount of heat, but as a proof of concept, I think it kind of works. Anyways, I'll let you decide, you know, what you think about this, but this has been Greasy Hammer, and if you like this video, then smash that like button and leave a comment and subscribe. Thank you very much, everybody. Until next time. Bye-bye.